Here we'll use linear programming techniques to see if it's worthwhile for our tomato grower to diversify into other lines. The profit from a box of tomatoes is £20 and from a box of lettuces £6.25. So the firm's profits will be the price of a box of lettuces multiplied by the number of boxes grown plus the price of a box of tomatoes multiplied by the number of boxes grown. So if we call a box of lettuces L and a box of tomatoes T, the objective function is maximize 6.25L plus 20T. But we have to do that subject to some constraints. Let's look at the labour constraint that we have. We've got seven hours or 420 minutes. And we need 10 minutes per L and 15 minutes per T. So 10 L plus 15 T has to be equal to or less than 420. We've got a space constraint, and the space for growing the tomatoes is double that for lettuces. So L plus 2T will have to be equal to or less than 50. We also have a sales constraint. He doesn't want more than 10 boxes of lettuces. So L has to be equal to or less than 10. And he wants at least 12 boxes of tomatoes. So T has to be equal to or greater than 12. Now we need to think about the non-negativity constraints. The output of each product can't be less than zero. So we further require that L is equal to or greater than zero. Now do we need an equivalent constraint for t? Well that's unnecessary because we've already specified that we must have 12t or more. So summarizing the problem, we have to maximize 6.25l plus 20t, that's the objective function subject to a number of constraints. 10L plus 15T has to be equal to or less than 420. L plus 2T has to be equal to or less than 50. L has to be equal to or less than 10. T has to be equal to or greater than 12. L has to be greater than zero. Now we haven't found the optimum level of tomatoes and lettuces yet, but we have expressed the problem in a form that enables us to derive a solution. We've established an objective function and we've established the set of constraints within which we have to work. So now let's draw a diagram in which we represent the form of the problem. And we'll graph, first of all, the first constraint. The constraint was 10L plus 15T is equal to or less than 420. How are we going to graph that? It's an equation of a straight line. We need to define two sets of coordinates. So if we set L equal to zero, we'll get 15t is equal to or less than 420. t is equal to or less than 28. Now if we set t equal to 0, we get 10l is equal to or less than 420. l equals 42. 
So we've now got two pairs of coordinates established. And we can plot the line using those pairs of coordinates. Now let's impose the second constraint on top of that diagram. For our second constraint, when L equals zero, T equals 25. When T equals zero, L equals 50. So that gives us our second constraint. Notice that again, we've shaded the areas up and to the right of these two lines to indicate that those are outside of the feasible range. Now we need to add the other constraints. These are that T cannot be negative. So we can shade the negative areas. And that L must be at least 12. Remember that given that L must be at least 12, we don't need a non-negativity constraint that says that L must be greater than zero. So here's the diagram that we now have. And we've labeled the points of the feasible area, A, B, C, and D. Point A having the coordinates zero and 25. Point B having the coordinates 10 and 20. Point C having the coordinates 10 and 12. Point D having the coordinates zero and 12. Now the coordinates for A, C, and D, we've either already established or they're very obvious, but we might need to check where our coordinates for point B came from. So let's do that. We're simply finding the solution of two linear equations. We've got L plus 2T is equal to or less than 50. And we've got that L is equal to or less than 10. So if we take equation two from equation one, we'll get 2T is equal to or less than 40. So T is equal to or less than 20. Now we can find the other coordinates, L plus 2T, is equal to or less than 50. L plus two, and we've already established that T is 20, so L plus two times 20 is equal to or less than 50. So L is equal to or less than 10. So we've nearly solved the problem. We just need now to use the information that we've established to find out which of these points a, B, C, and D on the borders of the feasible region maximizes profit.